Hey guys, today we're going to go do a Predator swap and a OMB torque converter kit on this 200EX uh, mini bike. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start here by removing the chain guard and also the jack shaft gear assembly, which is just two bolts that hold it on. You'll have to remove also a um, cotter pin and then the gear assembly will just slide off. I'm using um, an M12 uh, impact here, stubby 3 8 inch impact, which is just making my life much easier. As I take parts off, I'm separating them and putting them into a separate box just in case I can find somebody who can find some, uh, who, who would need some help with replacing parts on their stock bikes. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the master link here. Sometimes this goes easy, sometimes it's hard. It's just, you know, different things. This bike is has about, probably about five hours on it or so. It hasn't been ridden very hard, so the engine and jack shaft assembly are all in pretty good condition. So now I'm going to remove the four bolts that hold the jack shaft assembly to the engine, but then I forgot to pull the one that actually attaches it to the uh, frame. So that's just a nut and bolt there. Same thing, use the impact, pull that bolt off as well, and then just slide it off. I like to put the bolts back in the way I found them, just in case we have to reuse parts. Disconnect the kill wire attaching the high sun motor to the actual frame. Now we're uh, just pointing out where the engine mounting bolts are. I'm going to remove the air filter and uh, that's going to give me better access to the throttle car uh, cable linkage. So there's the throttle cable. I'm going to go ahead and undo the eyelet and then the actual cable holding it, uh, hold down assembly. And you should just be able to slide that all out. Okay, after, after that's pulled out, uh, you also have to pull it away from the recoil assembly as well. All right, so now we're going to use the impact here and pull the four mounting bolts off. The good part about this is if you use the impact, you usually don't need to use a wrench on the opposite side. It pulls so hard and so fast that it will get that off uh, without much fuss. The one thing I'm going to figure out here is, oops, I did not disconnect the headlight. The one thing about the Predator engine being added here is that it... Uh, does not produce enough current to run that headlight, which is not a big deal. So now I'm gonna go ahead and prep my riser assembly. I went ahead and painted this before I put it in, so it's a little nicer. Remember that the riser assembly needs to be moved forward as much as possible to create tension on the chain, otherwise that can create a problem down the road. So now I'm just installing the, the base plate bolts here and uh, go ahead and tighten those down. This time when you're actually tightening, you do have to have the uh, wrench on the other side unlike when you take them off so I'll go ahead and just get those tightened up as you can see we're fast forwarding through most of this this is just gonna save us a little bit of time and keep me from having to talk for uh, 15 minutes here I'm just trying to kind of keep up with the video as it goes this uh these videos are much harder than you think to to make uh so anyways as you can see the recoil assembly is on the wrong way so I'll have to fix that later I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the engine bolts add oil while the engine's in like this, I probably should have done it before, but no big deal. Now I'm going to remove the air filter in the faux gas tank. Could have probably done this earlier, but I just did it here because now it's a you know more of an issue. Now I'm going to loosen the throttle linkage bolt and also the eyelet. The throttle linkage bolt has to be loosened so that the throttle can move freely. And then the eyelet obviously gives you, you get better access here if you um, loosen that, uh, uh, take off the faux gas tank so you can get better access to the top of the motor. So we're going to pass the eyelet through here and uh, adjust it. And then after we're done here, we'll go ahead and verify the throttle action to make sure it's working properly, which it is. So after this is done, we're going to go ahead and remove the gas tank to do a, something that you don't need to do. Um, I do it on my bikes, so it makes them run better. And that is uh, adding the zip tie to the throttle return where the governor is. And this is to basically limit the governor's action when you're taking off because torque converters limit the engine pretty much to less than 4,000 RPM anyways. So you're not going to really uh, slam the motor as far as uh, over revving it, but this will allow you to have better takeoffs because the biggest issue with these bikes is that when you go to take off, unless you, you're scared of doing a wheelie, um, is that uh, the governor will pull back when you pull full throttle. So putting this zip tie assembly in here, which takes two seconds and two zip ties, will um, allow you to have better launches, especially if you're on you're taking on hills and stuff like that. It's better to do this so that you can get a better launch on your bike. So just put it back in place, verify that the action works. As you can see, the governor cannot pull back against the throttle assembly anymore. And it's I found this to just be the easiest solution. I see people putting all kinds of different ways to do it, but this is the easiest for me. 
So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the gas tank at this point. It's just the three bolts, the one back bolt and then the two front nuts. And I'm just tightening those back up. And uh, I hope I, I think I lost some of the videos here. So I don't have absolutely everything, but I think that we have 95% of all the shots. So now um, remember you're on a Predator motor, you're going to 5 16 to 24 one inch bolts to go ahead and re uh, to install the torque converter uh, mounting plate. Um, it's a metric on the high sun motors. So we're going to put the shaft spacer on here before we put on the uh, primary driver plate and then also the bushing. This is not the original or sorry, the one that came with the kit. I actually stole that and stuck it on the go-kart because uh, the go-kart was acting up as, as a KT-186. So I uh, took those off. These are pretty much rundown parts, um, but they work pretty good on this one. I was actually surprised that the, this was just going to be a holdover, but it actually worked pretty good. So um, I'm just going step by step here, installing the, each of the parts, and I already have a new torque converter on order, but uh, the other uh, KT186 really needed the newer parts on it, so that's where I used them. So now I'm going to go ahead and then thread the new chain, which is a different size, so remember you do have to change the chain, and um, you can always modify your own chain. You can do a lot of this yourself, uh, I just find these kits are pretty awesome, for especially for the price, I mean, if you can get OMB on sale, uh, on their kit, I believe it goes down as low as like 179, um, which is just a killer deal for what you're getting. Um, when they when you separate all the parts out, they build by far the best riser plate, especially compared to Go Power Sports, which I think builds the crappiest little the two pieces of uh, square steel. And uh, this is much nicer, better quality. So um, in this case, I'm lucky the uh, chain's loose enough that I can fit the. Uh, master link in there pretty easily and that doesn't always happen sometimes you have to loosen the back wheel first before you can slip the for wheel forward to uh set tension on the chain or oh, sorry put to install the mr master link and then set tension so as you can see the chain was loose so we're going to go ahead and um adjust it now and uh using a i do believe it's a 17 and a 19 millimeter still using my uh little mini impact i'm just telling you guys this thing is just 250 foot pounds of torque on that little sucker and it is like I said, my favorite tool to use as far as doing this type of work. So um, I'm just going ahead and adjusting the chain here, and we're pretty much done with this. Uh, we're not going to do the stage one power kit today. This is the way I like to do it. I like to do one thing at a time. That way you can see if anything's going wrong versus once the engine gets loud and you put an exhaust and stuff on it, uh, it's a lot harder to find out if something was, what, at what level something went wrong. Uh, this is my gas can, which I really like. It's uh, like 40 bucks or something like that. And you can actually feel at, at it much easier, especially when you have the gas can on top, a uh, gas cap on top like this. So um, I do modify the faux tank, and you'll see that in a little bit uh, to f work here. And uh, we're going to turn a little bit of audio on here. Um, I'm trying to keep it low so it's not too loud. Uh, this is the first start. This is not, I started at first. I haven't turned the recoil around either. I need to do that. But um, yeah, it started right up, no problem. And uh, this is a Harbor Freight Predator motor, so I don't really care if I kill it. Uh, I did buy it with the warranty this time, so I am okay if uh, it can't take it. But I did notice this latest version that they came out with the Predator motor. This is the California motor. I know all people don't like it, but um, it is pretty damn good compared to the other Predator motors I've had gotten. The build quality seems to have gone up. On certain things, it's the same, but uh, other parts, it's actually gotten a lot better. And this bike is really ripping right out of the box. I mean, this is just standard carburetor, standard air box and muffler, and it's already moving out real nice. And I actually want to go ahead and test this up against uh, my other bike that does have the Stage 1 kit on it already. So we're just going to do a walk around. You kind of see, um, I'm still going to clean up the wiring a little bit. This is just uh, some testing I'm doing right at this point. And you can see, like I said, the driver and um, pull uh, driven are both kind of beat up because they're older ones off the KT-186. And after the first time you adjust the chain, you probably will need to adjust the chain again. Once it gets, you know, pulling, that tends to be a problem. I don't know why the video rotated, but this is just me showing you where I drilled the access hole through the top of the faux tank so that you can make access with the gas tank below. Um, this make works really well with the gas can I showed earlier because it doesn't let gas out until you pull the trigger so you can feed gas in there much easier. 
So that's pretty much it. You guys can see the bike is in uh, good condition. I'll do a separate video here to do the stage one power kit. Also, I might do something with that stand. You, that's a stand I use to move the bike around. And uh, it's just fantastic. And as you can see, it actually uh, seconds as, as a holder for the bike as well. It just works really well for what it does. Please like and subscribe. I'm hoping to have more videos up soon with the stage one power kit install and other videos as well. Thank you for watching.